let's learn about desktop environments in Linux today because it's something you need to know about. In the first Linux Basics video, I explained distributions and I mentioned desktop environments and it's so easy to conflate the two. It's so easy to get those two mixed up. So with it in this video, I'm going to break it down, kind of show you the differences and uh, show you which desktop environments come on which distributions. So let's go ahead and jump into this topic. All right, desktop environments, what are they? I always say it's the look and feel of Linux, but what does that mean? What in the world is a desktop environment? And basically it has a whole bunch of different components or software that make up the look and feel or the desktop environment. And you got windows managers, you got uh, text editors, you have all kinds of stuff that just comes bundled in to make that operating system completely functional. And that's really the job of the desktop environment. Now the distribution itself has a whole bunch of other components other than the desktop environment. And it also adds on more software than the desktop environment, but the desktop environment itself is really how it looks. It's the desktop. So with that, let's go over the types of desktop environments. So the very first type I'm gonna go over is Cinnamon. And you've probably seen this screenshot before. This is Linux Mint. It is the maker of the Cinnamon desktop environment. So the Linux Mint distribution comes with Cinnamon. However, you can install Cinnamon on other distributions. So this is important to know because if you really like the look and feel of this, and let's say you wanted to take it over to like a Manjaro or an Arch Linux based system, a lot of times these other distributions have that capability. Not always, but it's worth checking out. So uh, when it comes to Arch, I always recommend the first time you jump over, trying Manjaro out because it has such a wide array of selections when it comes to desktop environments, which is fantastic. So if you're big on KDE or all these other different desktop environments, a lot of times it has it. Just like Ubuntu in the Debian based realm has a lot of these desktop environments in, but Cinnamon is the first one, and that usually comes baked with Linux Mint, but you can also add it to other ones. So if you really like this look and feel, just remember, I am a Cinnamon person. I like this desktop environment. And then if you find a different distribution that you really like, but it doesn't have the desktop environment, you can change it. Next up is Deep In, and this one is kind of a oddball of the group. Uh, this one has a very sleek look and feel, almost like a Mac OS X. And I'm actually going to package this one, Enlightenment, and Pantheon all within kind of the same one. So Deep In comes with that. Enlightenment comes with uh, the actual Enlightenment OS or, or distribution. And then Pantheon comes with uh, Elementary. Uh, so these are kind of like a very sleek look, but uh, I don't particularly like them. But if you like this type of look, check out these three different desktop environments. Uh, I find them to be just a little lacking, so that's why I don't particularly care for them, but definitely keep them in mind because of how they look and feel. Their settings menus are pretty sleek and kind of all that one screen almost, almost reminds me of Android a little bit because of how the menus work and everything's kind of on that main screen. And then next up, uh, I'm gonna go over GNOME or GNOME as some people in the Linux community call it. Now GNOME itself is on probably the most popular desktop environment and it has this look. This right here is a little bit weird for me. It, coming from Windows, it has a very different look and feel. A lot of its menus are still very sleek and cool looking. It just doesn't feel quite right to me. You don't have like uh, the massive control panel and a lot of the things that I'm so used to. Everything is just in a different spot, but it's still very functional and probably one of the most popular desktop environments on there. So you can see the actual, how, how it doesn't have like a start menu. It's more of like a start screen per se, where it shows all the different icons and you have your favorites bar over on the left. And it's a, a neat option. A lot of people love it. Next up is my absolute favorite. And that is KDE. This is like a very customizable 
Windows-esque file system. You have your start bar, you have all the different options. You can right click on the icons and change like the shortcut icons. You have uh, global hotkeys like alt and space to pull up that global search without interfering with what's going on on your desktop. There's all these really neat features of KDE and why I like it so much is it kind of has a lot of that look and feel of Windows, but it even adds on to that functionality. And it seems like there's so much more going on with this desktop environment. Now, KDE itself, there's almost every desktop spin has, a, like I said, GNOME is probably the most common, but KDE would be a second runner in this because a lot of places say, you know what, if you're not a GNOME person, you're probably a KDE person and they have that kind of spin. So that's kind of awesome that you see these two uh, desktop environments, both GNOME and KDE, you usually fall into one of these at the end of the day because they're so feature rich. But at the same time, they do have a lot of stuff that comes on them. They're not very lightweight. So if you're on a really old system or old computer, most people opt for something different from GNOME or KDE. Now, myself, I usually roll with KDE just because I love it. However, lately, I have been switching with GNOME on one of my PCs inside. So uh, it just depends on your look and your tastes. And that's one of the things. You usually fall into these two. I'd say these are the top two that most people just love. But uh, the other ones have their place. They have a completely different design to them. And this brings me to the next one, which is LXDE. And this is a lightweight desktop environment. And it is very, very lightweight. Uh, it runs with almost like a hundred and something megs worth in the memory. So it's extremely lightweight. By contrast, KDE and also uh, GNOME, for the most part, use like about a gig of memory, just a little bit under a gig of memory in most instances. It's around 700 something, where this one literally runs about a hundred. The downside is, well, there's a lot less stuff. And out of the box, to really make this look good, requires a lot of customization where out of the box KDE and GNOME pretty much look good. So I want to compare this, but what I use this one for is if I'm remote, it's really nice to have that lightweight desktop environment because it's not shooting over as much stuff. It's just a lot more lightweight. So it's really good for remote support and those types of things when you need to use some desktop environment like this or maybe uh, put it on a server if you wanted like an actual graphic user interface for your server. A lot of times this would be a good substitute because it just doesn't really take up much headroom. So uh, there's a good spot for this. Running it main on my main machine though, I, I don't think I could hang just because I'd be missing so many features. But everybody's a little different and some people want all the performance they possibly can squeeze out of their machine and they don't care about all these features. Next up is Mate or, or Mate. And this is pretty awesome. This right here is a different kind of spin. It's almost got that Windows-esque feel, but it's just like a hybrid between like GNOME and also Cinnamon. It's, it's like this kind of in between. So this appeals to a lot of people, a lot of people that try all the different desktop environments and they, they don't like GNOME and they don't like KDE. This is like a good in between. So this is a, a different one, but a lot of Linux users of long, long time love Mate. So definitely check it out. I, I highly recommend it. But at the same token, uh, this one, I, I didn't speak to me, but I know a lot of people have used it for years and years. So uh, this is definitely a popular desktop environment. And then probably at the end here that I want to mention is XFCE. Now this one is a very bare bones one's like LXDE, but it does have more features. You can really make XFC shine like I ran it uh, for about a month or two at, on my main machine so XFC is very functional and I actually made a, a customization video over XFC because out of the box it's so darn ugly but you really can customize it and make it look fantastic so I absolutely love XFC and if I'm on a bare bones system this is usually my go-to uh, desktop environment because I like a lot more of the bells and whistles but at the same time, I don't want to strip it all the way down to like an LXDE style desktop environment. So this is just kind of like the look and feel of all of uh, the different distributions. All of them typically use one of these uh, desktop environments I mentioned today. Most of them have the option to choose one of these. So as a new Linux user, most people go, okay, 
I am a KDE guy or I am a GNOME guy. I like the layout of this desktop environment. And then they learn that desktop environment and then they're very familiar with it. This allows them to go between distributions and other things and always have that familiarity with the product. So when you actually are on your system, you know, hey, the settings are up here. The control panel's over here. I know here for display manager or network settings, all these different things from the graphic user inter interface point of view really doesn't change when you stick to one of these desktop environments. And it really helps you if you distro hop at all and you go to a different distribution, you know, hey, I really like the look and feel of this. You can just pick I want to go to Manjaro from Ubuntu. And let's say I'm a K KDE person. I'm on Kubuntu, where it's a KDE spin of Ubuntu. And I want to go to Manjaro. I can just pick Manjaro KDE, and I can go over there. And identically, it looks almost identical, so you're not too uh, put off by the changes. But you still get like a different package manager and those types of things because you've switched distributions. But it still looks the same. So... These are the different things, and I'll go more into the actual back end of this and how package managers and those types of things work, and I have in prior videos, but I'm gonna try and break that down in a basic way. But desktop environments are one of those things, it's the look and feel of Linux, and no matter what distribution you're on, you're gonna be on one of these desktop environments. So there's a couple others in here that you probably saw on this list, I'll flash up. Uh, these are pretty much, I, I, you just don't see them. So I would say it's safe to ignore or they've been completely depreciated and really aren't part of any uh, distribution. So you rarely would see these. And, and really, I wanted to just hit the highlights of the things that people will use. So between all these desktop environments, these are my use cases for them. All of them have a great purpose. All of them are fantastic desktop environments. It's just which one is right for you? That is really what you need to figure out. Because once you figure out which desktop environment you like, it makes your job of adopting Linux or using Linux a heck of a lot easier because you now know where everything is and you can go between distributions without that shell shock of, oh crap, where is this or where is that? And you just know. So that's the power of desktop environments. Just remember, Find yours. Find the one that's right for you. And I'll go ahead and, and make a different video about installing multiple desktop environments. However, I caution you from not doing this right out of the gate because a lot of times when you install multiples, especially when you go over two or three, you can really mess up some stuff. And it's really important to understand how to switch between the two. So if you're gonna go for that, I highly recommend just downloading the new distribution with the specific uh, desktop environment that you like. That'll give you the best experience. Uh, however, there are ways to install multiple desktop environments. And that way, if you really switch between two, it's not that big of a deal. Because I've honestly done a lot of multiple desktop environment installations. It's just a little tricky getting out of the gate because a lot of them use different display managers. And I'll get into that in a new video, but basically that's how you choose which desktop environment to go to. And it's a little more tricky than just going, I want to pick this desktop environment from your uh, login screen. So with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. How did I do on this one? I tried to stay away from the technical jargon. However, I still haven't broke it down as simply as I possibly can. Uh, I tried as hard as I could in this video, though. But with all that, I want to say thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.